We give God praise for the wonderful opportunity to gather as far as this Memorial Day weekend is concerned. We thank the Lord uh, for all of those that are joining us on our various platforms. And of course, we celebrate and appreciate what God is doing as far as our lives are concerned. Good morning to all of those who are watching us. If you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or engaging in our live chat room found on our church website, I want to welcome you to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and our social media influencers are ready to engage you this morning. So do me a favor. If you're watching us on Facebook, share on your personal timeline without starting a separate watch party. I want to make sure you stay in the same chat stream. You can tag those whom you want to invite to this post. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and text this link to the worship service in your personal network. And if you're in the chat room on our website, click the invite button in your chat window to share this experience. And uh, also, we want to make sure that you just let us know where you're watching us from. And you can put that as far as the chat is concerned. Let me just share one thing before uh, we move forward as far as today's worship experience is concerned. And I'll reiterate this during my pastoral observations as a part of our social justice ministry. I want to give a major shout out to Reverend D'Angelo Dia, as well as those that are working with him on our social justice ministry. We are now in the effort of providing resources for our incarcerated brothers and sisters. We have established a partnership which is allowing for us to simulcast Sunday morning worship for our brothers and sisters at the Mecklenburg County Detention Center. And it's our hope that we will be able to worship uh, with them via our church website or YouTube or Facebook Live in uh, the weeks to come. Uh, this service is being broadcast to an estimated 1,500 men and women that will eventually be coming out and coming uh, home and will be productive citizens. So we want to welcome them and give God praise for them. Uh, we're going to be praying for you all this morning. Dr. Monica Redmond is going to come. She's going to lead us as far as our worship experience is concerned. I see you all on Zoom as well as our website. Amen. I want to wave at you. It's just a regular crew this morning. Amen. Amen. So give God praise at this moment. Dr. Redmond, would you come? Bless the Lord. So good to be here. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy and righteous name. We have come into this house, gathered in his name, to worship him. So I'm going to say, forget about yourselves. Let's concentrate on him and worship him. Please allow our praise team to sing. We have come for worship.
Praise the Lord. Before we read our scripture, I want to ask, because I am looking in our chat window streams on YouTube, Facebook, and our church, church website, and I'm curious where everyone is watching. So if you would take the time to let us know what city and state you are watching us from. Our scripture this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with verse number 1. It reads like this, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin Purged. So I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Reading is one thing, but application is another. Would you go with me to the Lord in prayer? O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, before we ask you for a thing, we do want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for our lying down last night and our early arising this morning. Father, we're here in worship, and we ask that you sit down in our worship today along with us. Father, we can't worship if you don't come by here. Father, I'm just like my grandmama that used to say, Come by here, Lord, because we need to feel your presence. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will move up and down these aisles and be with our families who are watching us on the screen. Be with the choir as they sing. God, be with our pastor as he stands here in the pulpit and preach your word. God, we know that we can't sing a song. We can't pray a prayer if you don't stop by here. Oh God, we know that we can't do anything without your power. Father, we need your power in this place today. Somebody is crying out, I need God more than I need anything. God, that's what I'm crying out. Father, I need you. I need your presence. I need your voice. I need you, oh God, to move in this place in such a way, oh God, that somebody, oh God, somebody cries out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? God, if you don't come by here, God, we can't sing. We can't pray. God, the preacher can't preach. God, we need you now like never before. God, we love you. Oh God, we love you so much. Oh, we love you. We feel your presence now. We feel you, God, wrapping your loving arms all around us. And God, we are grateful. Now God, when we leave here today, we're gonna leave here leaping and jumping, knowing that we have been in your presence. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.
Let's give the Lord some praise wherever we are right now. Let's celebrate and let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 Good morning to all of those who are joining us through our various platforms. We are certainly delighted and elated that the Lord has laid upon your heart to be part of our worship experience. And we don't take this for granted. And so we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules, particularly during this Memorial Day uh, weekend to join us as far as this worship experience is concerned. Last week, we had 120-something plus people in the house celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Uh, today, we have reverted back to our COVID protocol as far as just having the bare minimum in the house. And so uh, we ask that you all would pray for us and with us. For those that have just joined us a few moments ago, I want to let you all know something that our social justice ministry under the leadership of Reverend D'Angelo Dia has done as part of the ministry to our sisters and brothers who are incarcerated. We have established a partnership which is allowing for us to simulcast at this time our Sunday morning worship for our brothers and sisters who are housed at the Mecklenburg County Detention Center. Amen. And it's our hope that we will uh, be able to 
extend that worship uh, service uh, as far as video is concerned real soon. It is being broadcast right now to uh, an estimated 1,500 individuals. Many of them are going to be coming home soon for a fresh start. We want them to be productive citizens as far as the community is concerned. We welcome them. St. Paul, would you, for those that are in the house as well as those that are watching us online, if you would put together your virtual claps, put together physical claps in the house to let them know we welcome you, we thank God for you all, and we're going to be praying for you all. Just a few things I need to share with you as we move forward as far as this worship experience is concerned. We want to thank you, St. Paul, for your generosity, your kindness, your largesse. We served over 190 families this past week as far as our food pantry was concerned. Uh, again, to Sister Felicia Knowles and all of those who served so diligently and faithfully with her, I want to thank you all, and I want to thank you, St. Paul, for your financial contribution to make that a reality. I also just want to mention that um, as far as Deacon Family Scholarship, uh, the application for 2021 uh, is online. The scholarship is for currently enrolled students. And if you're interested, please contact uh, Sister Pat Chambers at pattycake0812 at att.net or LaVon Sessoms at lsess at hotmail.com for the application. The deadline is June the 1st. We will not have a monthly check-in on this Tuesday. I will be out of town hanging out with my mom. So we're not going to have that monthly check-in on this Tuesday. We will reschedule it for another time, and we'll let you know as far as when that time will be. Let me uh, just give a correction because I've been giving out the wrong announcement, and I want to apologize for that. But we are having an end-of-school-year celebration on Sunday, June the 13th. Between 1 and 3 p.m., the Academic Resource Ministry will sponsor an end-of-the-school-year drive through celebration for pre-K through the 11th grade. We want to celebrate and cheer you uh, as our children as you have ended a challenging year dealing with COVID, vacillating between virtual and physical presence as far as school is concerned. You have made it, and we want to celebrate you. And so between 1 and 3, Sherelle and her crew are going to have goodies for you all, so we want you all to bug your parents to drive you through. If you have been promoted, we want you to come through. If you are struggling, we want you to come through. Amen. We want to make sure that we all are able to lift you up because you have survived. Also, graduation uh, recognition Sunday is going to be on June the 27th. Our guest preacher for that Sunday is the Reverend Brianna K. Parker, the CEO and founding curator of Black Millennial Cafe. We want to recognize all of our graduates from high school, community college, college, as well as those who have pursued advanced degrees. You can notify the church by going to stpaulbaptist.church slash grad. Fill out your application, well, information rather, so we can make sure we have your information. Also, I just want to note, for those who have gotten advanced degrees, uh, your master or doctoral degree, if you wear your hood as well as your robe, I will rehood you on that Sunday morning if you are here. We want to give lift as far as that's concerned. The Debt Free Life Group will be having a learn and discuss behavior tools and scriptures that will help us identify our financial vulnerabilities and break free from the oppression of debt. Uh, Minister Erica Miner is going to be leading this uh, small group. The dates are June the 15th through the 20th on Tuesday evenings from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock. You can register by going to the website. Also, are you a high school graduate or a college student or recent college graduate who desires to live a prosperous, debt-free life? We got something just for you. The Debt-Free Life Group is hosting to be young, gifted, and debt-free financial fitness, uh, a five-week course for college-age individuals. Uh, the dates are going to be June the 6th through uh, July, June the 8th through July the 6th on Tuesday evening from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. The cost is $10 for your study material. You can register by going to, Saint, to our website and clicking on the small group. 
Karen has shared with me that there's another person that's going to be leading that conversation. Uh, and the name, I don't have it on me right now, but I want to let you all know that um, it's under her auspices, but we are empowering somebody else to do that. We want to also remind you that our media ministry could use your help. Amen. As we prepare to move forward as far as this digital aspect of worship is concerned, we need persons who are interested in operating cameras, doing graphics, serving as technical director. If you're interested in doing that, we want you to contact uh, Kamis Noel at kamis.noel at yahoo.com. And we want to lift um, uh, our uh media ministry up in prayer because they have been doing a wonderful, wonderful job. As we prepare to transition and uh, go to the Lord in prayer, there are um, some prayer concerns that we want to share with you all. First of all, I want to let you all know we want to lift up uh, brother Reggie Woods, who has lost his brother Curtis Woods, and those arrangements are pending. So we want to lift him up in prayer. We also want to lift up the family of Sister Pearl Carlos, the grandmother of uh, Brother Terrence Minor, uh, and uh, her services will take place in Chicago at Cary Temple. Uh, the visitation will be on Thursday, June the 3rd, and the funeral will be on Friday, June the 4th at 10 o'clock p.m. The family of Sister Jeff Nur, the Sager, the brother of sister, uh, uh, disciple uh, Robin Terry, those services will take place Thursday, June the 3rd at Scott's Funeral Home in uh, Richmond, Virginia. We also want to lift up the family of uh, Sister Aggie Eves. Uh, the, um, uh, she is the uh, sister of Deacon James Johnson. She was funeralized last week. The family of Sister Deborah Henderson, uh, the sister of Disciple Johnny Henderson, the family of Brother Willie Bolton, the brother-in-law of disciple Patricia Love, the family of brother Richard McKinney, uh, the son of disciple Hazel Patterson. And uh, we want to also, as far as our sick and shut-in are concerned, we want to lift up Eloise Alexander, who will be having surgery this week. Uh, we want to lift up Adrian Amos, who has had surgery. We want to lift up Deacon Jacqueline Brown, who has had a mild stroke. We want to cover her in our prayer. She is home uh, and recuperating, so we want to lift up that family. Sean Crawford, Jean Pettis-Dean, uh, Reverend Dr. Paul Drummond, uh, Sister Thomasina Drummond, Philip Dunstan, uh, Pescola Knight, Bridget Truesdale, Gina Truesdale, Rhonda White, and uh, we want to continue to lift those persons up in prayer, as well as other names that are scrolling on our sick and shut-in list. We know that God can do anything but fail. Amen. And I'm going to ask that uh, Dr. Redman will come and lead us to the throne of grace. Would you take the time to pray with me this morning? Our Father and our God, we come before you now as humble as we know how. We come, oh God, as empty vessels before a very full fountain. God, you've heard the names of all the individuals who are experiencing death and loss. And Father, you even heard the names of those who are experiencing sickness. God, this time last year, I myself, as you know, was in the hospital, but God, I stand here healed today. Yes, yes. And so I say to my brothers and my sisters who are laying on their sick beds that God is a healer. We serve a God who not only sees and hears, but he does something about it. God, thank you. Thank you, oh God, that we don't have to send you to Carolina's Medical Center. We don't have to send you to Presbyterian Hospital. God, because we know you're already there. God, you are already in the hospital room. And God, you are there with our friends and our brothers and our sisters. And God, you are working on their bodies right now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God, you are bringing about healing. God, we say thank you. 
Thank you, oh God, for every doctor and for every nurse that comes into a room. Thank you, oh God, that even though they come, that at the end of the day, we stand and we declare that you are our healer. You are our healer, oh God. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. Oh, thank you, oh God, for wrapping your loving arms all around us. Thank you, oh God, for breathing on us your healing power and your healing virtue. God, we say thank you this morning. God, we say thank you. Oh God, for those individuals who don't have a home to sleep in. God, we say thank you because you can provide. God, you're a provider. God, provide sustenance for them. Provide sustenance for those who don't have the food that they need. God, I thank you. Thank you for the money that they need. God is coming in. And God, we glorify you today. We intercede now, God, in the name of Jesus. For those who are feeling a sense, oh God, that they are alone. Oh God, help them this morning to let them know that they're never alone because you're right there with them. God, thank you for being an omnipresent God. God, you're everywhere at the same time. God, thank you for that. God, we glorify you in this moment. We say, well done. Oh God, for everything that has happened in our lives. Oh God, we're grateful. Oh, we're grateful, oh God, because you are a mighty, mighty good God to us. God, as we move through this day, we will continue to celebrate who you are. We will continue to celebrate the fact that you are our God. And beside you, there is none other. God, we love you. We honor you. And we praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you believe that your prayer is being answered, can you give God some praise right now? Amen. Amen. I see you all on our Zoom, and we thank God for your presence. It, it is offering time. It is offering time. It is offering time. And what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for us to partner with our God through the aspect of giving. Giving is worship. Giving is worship. And uh, as we move forward, as far as this moment of giving is concerned, just want to thank you all again for how wonderfully gracious and generous you all have been as far as giving is concerned. As we prepare to give, there are basically three ways you can give here at St. Paul Church. The first one is by either dropping off your check, cash, or money order here at the church at 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. Um, you can call the church at 704-334-5309 to make sure someone is here to receive your offering. We will receive your offering, put it in a safe, and make sure it's part of the next week's count. The other way that you can give is by mailing your check or money order to the church at 1401 Allen Street, Charlotte, 28205. Another way you can give is by going to our website and either through Church Life or ACS. You can give as far as uh, electronic giving is concerned. And then the final way is through the app called Givelify. If you don't have that app on your smart device, download that app to your smart device, connect it to your credit card, and in three clicks, you can give as far as uh, St. Paul is concerned. I want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity to partner with God as far as reconciling and redeeming uh, the broken creation that we have messed up. And so as we do this, one thing I understand, you and I cannot be God giving no matter how hard we try. So as we prepare to give, I want you to, if you can, take your offering or however you're giving, place it in your right hand. We want to give God what's right, not what's left. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to partner with you as far as giving is concerned. It's not something we take lightly. And as we give, oh God, not grudgingly or out of necessity, but cheerfully, because we are told you love the cheerful giver, bless these gifts of ours. God, bless those who are practicing the discipline of tithing. Bless those who have gone beyond just giving the tithe. And then, God, bless those who are trying to get to the level of tithing. 
And then God, as we would say back in Mississippi, for those who aren't giving turpentine their minds to understand they can't beat you given no matter how hard they try. Take these gifts of ours, multiply them in a Godful way so that your word, your work, your witness, and your worship will go throughout the world. It is in the name of Jesus, the Christ we do pray, the ultimate gift you gave to us. Amen. Go ahead and give at this time. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. And uh, give God praise as our singing ensemble will come and bless us with the Sermonic Selection.
If you're watching us online and you know he's a way maker, a heart fixer, a mind regulator, a miracle worker, can you just celebrate and give God the praise that he so richly and rightfully deserves? Come on, we can do a whole lot better than that. Amen, 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 amen. We thank God for that reminder. We thank God for that reminder. I believe I see my family online in the Zoom and I... I'm waving at you, Pierre. Amen. Amen. They in Mississippi, hanging out with my mom, trying to get her straightened out. Amen. Amen. We thank God. She just celebrated 71 years of life and living on this past Friday. We thank God for her. Amen. Before I move uh, to our text for the day, I just want to welcome to the St. Paul Church uh, a fellow preacher and fraternity brother, uh, the Reverend Dr. Boyd, and we thank God for him all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, the pastor of the Mount Bethel Baptist Church, Jocks Boyd. We thank God for you being in the house this morning. Um, had to help my brother out and um, got him situated, and so he wanted to roll with me to church today. I uh, got stuck at the airport, but I wasn't going to let him stay at the airport last night. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we thank God that he is able to, to join us and uh, is a gracious brother. Um, uh, and has been doing great work in the Nashville area. And so um, that's what we as the Q's do, George. Amen. <clears throat> I'm just saying. All right. All right. Ah. <laughs> uh, over the next um, uh, several times that I preach, I want to focus on um, Psalm 138. And uh, one thing about preaching is that uh, you can take a text and like a diamond, twist it many different ways and see different facets or aspects of that diamond. You can see different facets or aspects of the text. And so over the next several weeks, I want to focus on Psalm 138. And um, I will read it in its entirety. It's eight verses. Uh, but I uh, ask for your prayers as we will try to flip this diamond of Scripture uh, in several different ways to see what the Lord will have to say. And um, particularly for uh, our brothers and sisters who are at the detention center, uh, this word was laid on my heart um, to share with you all as far as this time is concerned. Psalm 138 reads like this from the New King James Version of Scripture. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day I will cry out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. Um, that part, verses 6 through 8, is where I really want to anchor down sermonically this morning and talk about God is not through with us yet. God is not through with us yet. The late Reverend James Cleveland had a song entitled, Please Be Patient With Me. The lyrics to this song connote several facts that are very apparent in our human reality. It is this, you and I are not perfect. We have our shortcomings and our drawbacks we have our frailties and our faults. You and I are creatures of clay who are prone to disappointments, cutbacks, 
setbacks, and mishaps. I wish it were not the case, but God knows we are inclined to messing up and falling short. We find ourselves in situations we know we cannot extricate ourselves unless God does something remarkable to prove how much God loves us. The problem with living on this side of the Jordan is that what seems like a grim, unfortunate, and horrific situation might be God doing something behind the scenes of eternity to shape and form us in his image and his likeness. Some of us erroneously assume we mean nothing to God due to the hardships and the trials we may be experiencing in our current reality. We think that God does not care about what's happening to us, in us, and around us. Unfortunately, there are some people who think that God does not care about us because of COVID-19. There are those who think that God does not care about black folks about because of what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma nearly 100 years ago with that unfortunate incident of the massacre that burned up what we now know as the Black Wall Street. There are those who think that God does not care about black people because of police brutality. Some think that God does not care about us by virtue of the fact that you have Republicans in Congress who did not even want to set up a commission to examine what happened on January the 6th. We are living in some scurrilous times because when you look at what is happening to people who are marginalized and disenfranchised, we may come to the erroneous conclusion that God has forsaken us. As one confronts trouble, we think that God has abandoned us. And let's be honest, those painful moments create fear and those crises make us question the presence of God in our lives. And I know, cause I at times struggle with this, how can I deal with those crisis moments that does not make sense as far as my relationship with God is concerned? How can you and I face the problems and predicaments that continue to bring sadness and heartaches as far as our life is concerned? How do we deal with life disappointments that throw us for a loop, causing us to question our faith and test our resolve? When you evaluate your life in segments rather than as a whole, you just might fall apart when the slightest thing goes wrong. We fall apart because things do not go the way we think they should. And we make the erroneous assumption that God has dropped us like a hot potato. But this song that James Cleveland sings reminds us that God is not through with us because God does not leave us. We are not isolated because we serve a God who watches over us, sustains us, and keep us even when we are unable to keep ourselves. Yet, too many of us need something definitive to empower us to press on when we feel like giving up. We need to be reminded that our dark moment is not the ultimate expression of God's will for our lives. In other words, it's not God's will for us to remain hopeless, helpless, and hapless. It's not God's desire for us not to have any joy in our life or any sense of peace or no appreciation for grace. I stop by to let you know that God has more in store for us than we can ever imagine. And it is not dependent upon the economy your job, social status, or educational background. It is not centered on your political connections, your GPA, your running crew, or financial position. That what God has for you and me is directly, explicitly, and integrally connected to our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And therefore, you and I cannot have joy in our life peace for our reality, and mercy for our mess when we lack a relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior. 
our relationship with Christ gives us the boldness and the tenacity to face our Goliaths, to deal with our souls, and to handle the Absaloms which will come our way. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know somebody is watching me on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom that have to testify that the only way you're able to make it is because you got Jesus in your life. In Christ, you and I live, move, and have our being. In Christ, we are sustained, maintained, and restrained. In Christ, we are revived, renewed, revitalized, and rekindled. In Christ, we are enriched, enraptured, and emboldened. Therefore, who you and I are is not based upon what we bring to the table because we don't have anything to bring to the table to God in the first place. Please don't look at me all suspect and crazy like I just fell off my rockers because we must understand that you and I are sinners who have been saved by grace. Let's be honest, we are unclean, uncouth, unkempt, and unkept because we have messed up from the floor up. And as much as we don't want to admit it, we're nothing more than sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God. Even the best of us, when it comes to our righteousness, it's like filthy rags in the sight of God. This is why when we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are saved to the utmost. In other words, I need to remind you that you only get saved one time. Uh, you don't have to get re-saved because when God does something for you, he does it well. Uh, when Jesus saves you, that's it. Uh, you don't have to tarry at the altar to get the Holy Ghost. You don't need to speak in tongues. You don't need to clap your hands on Zoom. You don't need to throw something at the computer. If you're in the church, you don't need to run around the church. You don't need to scream and holler. The Bible tells us with simplicity and with wisdom in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Doesn't say might, doesn't say could, it says shall. Y'all, that is an imperative. That means it's going to come to pass. And then Paul says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. The problem with too many of us who claim to be part of the church is not salvation unless you did not believe Jesus in the first place. The, the, the problem with a lot of us is our unwillingness to submit to the lordship of Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Th this happens, this happens because many of us have not been taught what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. When you submit, though, to the lordship of Jesus, he becomes more than your savior. And when you submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ, that means you are put in a position where you can be discipled, where you can be taught so you can grow and be conformed to the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. And when you have proper formation with divine inspiration that when life starts falling apart, you will not lose your ever-loving mind. Can I preach it the way that I feel it? This is where uh, the rubber meets the road. This is the crux of the matter. And unfortunately, there are those of you all who are watching me on Zoom. There are those who are listening to me as far as the detention center is concerned. This is where we miss the point of grace and mercy. Here it is. Just because, and I know this is getting ready to be a major revelation for somebody, just because you and I are saved does not mean we are mature. Uh-oh, I know I just lost half of y'all. Uh, just because you and I are saved does not mean we got it all together. I, I know I'm getting ready to make somebody mad. Salvation is the beginning point to move you toward maturity. But if you don't get on the path toward maturity, you will be saved and carnal. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I, I know I'm getting ready to mess up somebody. And that's why some of us behave the way that we do. Saved, but acting like a baby. Saved, but acting like spoiled brats. 
Saved by acting ignorant. Saved by acting crazy. Saved by acting foolish. Saved by acting immature. Saved by acting stuck on stupid. Saved by acting like an idiot. You can be saved and you can be carnal, which means there are some things that God has to deliver you from before God can give you the things he has purpose for your life. And the problem is not with God's grace being introduced into your reality. The problem is you are struggling with your will versus submitting to the will of God for your life. And the longer you bask in what you want, the longer you delay what God wants to do in your life. The, the longer you please the flesh, the longer you postpone the promises God has for you. The, the longer you give in to your selfish desires, the longer you suspend the blessings that God has for you. This is because when you are saved, hear me and hear me wave, when you are born again, you no longer belong to yourself. You belong to God. But can we be honest? I see seven of y'all online. I'll make eight. God has to do some work in us and on our spirit as God shapes us to become what God will have for us to be. I know I'm getting ready to make somebody mad, but let me drop this on you for free. You can't be the head and not the tail when you do what you want to do. You, you can't be more than a conqueror when you do what you want to do. You can't live a victorious life when you do what you want to do. You can't claim the promises of God when you do what you want to do. You can't claim financial breakthrough, but you ain't willing to pay your tithes and offerings. You can't ask God to heal your body, but you still smoke, you still drink, and you have an unprotected, non-marital sex. You can't ask God to bless you exceedingly and abundantly, but you don't want to submit to God's will for your life. Uh, Lord, I'll give you 90 minutes on Sunday, and if that Negro go past 12 o'clock, I'm cutting out on this virtual platform, and maybe an hour on Thursday, but the rest rest of the week is mine. I don't know who I'm talking to, but is there anybody out there that know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein? And this is why you and I have to testify to the fact that God ain't through with us yet. I know it ain't good English, but it's great theology. That's somebody's testimony right now. And if you're honest, if you're on Zoom, if you're on Facebook, if you're watching us on the computer, if you're in your living room, a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, or wherever, you can testify that when you let God have God's way in your life, you are not the same person you were five years ago, 10 years ago, or 50 years ago. You, you, you know your walk with God has carried you over some mountains and down through some valleys. You've had some good days and some stormy nights. You've seen both sunshine and rain. And you have to attest that your process has been wrought with success and failures, ups and downs, smiles and frowns, mistakes and victories, trouble and triumph. Somebody have to shout with a voice of praise that you ain't the same person because God has done some things in your life that allow for you to forgive some grudges, engage in ministry, increase your giving, practice your faith, witness to the lost, encourage weary hearts, and be a living testimony that if the Lord can change me, Woo! He can change anybody. It ain't going to happen overnight. You're not a one deal wonder. You know what God has to do. Because if it were left up to you, can, can we be honest right now? If it were left up to you, you would not be where you are right now. And somebody that's watching me, somebody in the sanctuary got to lift up holy hands and thank God for the difference Jesus has made in your life. This is, this is, my brothers and sisters, what David, King David, Shepherd David, 
Father David mentions as far as this psalm is concerned. I like the way that David opens up this song. The opening words of this song depicts David giving Yahweh praise before all the other gods as he presses his way toward the temple of worship. Why is it that David mentions other gods? Because Israel was prone to idol worship. And David wanted to make it clear <laughs> that these other gods don't count. That, that these other gods don't have any power. That these other gods cannot contend with Yahweh. They, they pale in comparison. David has seen Yahweh work on his behalf and therefore his allegiance is to the supreme God of the universe. Uh, in other words, David is saying, uh, not Baal, the false god of fertility, whom the natives would chant to to help their crops grow. Not, not Asherah, the, the false god of sexuality, whom the natives would seek out to help them in the form of dysfunctional sexual expression, like trying to sleep with as many as you can to prove your virility. Not, not Molech, the false god whom the natives would sacrifice children so that the dead can protect and have provisions made for them. God knows in 2021, we have our own bales and our own Asherahs and our own Molex in society. And I even want to throw in that even though he's out of office, for some folks, Trump has become a god. The modern day Baal may not necessarily be a golden calf, but it could be cash where you'll do anything for a buck. The modern day Asherah is not some wooden god, but the perverted sexuality present in today's society where men and women become objects rather than persons. And as a matter of fact, this is demonstrated uh, on social media and on television because they now even use sex to sell cars, clothes, and anything else. Uh, the, the, the modern day Molech is not some scary creature with the head of an animal and the body of a human, but rather those societal, cultural influences killing our children's aspirations and inspiration. A lousy school system is Molech. Child abuse is Molech. Uh, inept teachers are Molech. Inept politicians messing with our children's school system is Molech. Drug-infested communities is Molech. Crime-riddled neighborhoods is, is Molech. A church that does not do anything for its youth and children that can be Molech. Our children are being sacrificed on the altar of apathy. Yet David is letting us know these gods don't count. These gods don't have any power. These gods are gods you have to make and you have to carry it. I don't know about anybody else. I don't need a god that I have to carry. I need a god who can carry me. That, that's, that's, what, that's what David said. He said, I'm giving my praise as I make my way to the temple. And you all, I, I really could stop right there. Uh, 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 this is the problem with too many of us church folks. Uh, you want to wait till Sunday morning to start praising God. Uh, you you, you want to wait until you come online to start praising God. But I need to remind somebody that you need to learn how to praise God anytime you start thinking about the goodness of God. Can, can I go a little deeper about this praise thing? You don't give God praise because you feel like it. <laughs> you, you give God praise because God deserves it. David says in the text, I got to praise you because of your loving kindness. I got to praise you because you've been faithful to me. I got to praise you because you've been answering my prayers. I got to praise you because of your covenant love toward me. I got to praise you because you took care of me in the past. God, you're the one who gave me strength. God, you're the one that gave me courage. And I just got to praise you. 
when you know what God has done in your life. No, I, I, I'm, I'm talking for real now. When, when you think about all that God has done in your life, uh, the ways that have been made, the provisions that have been supplied, uh, how God kept you when you were too dumb and crazy to keep yourself, uh, how you did not lose your mind when you should have, uh, you should be giving God praise uh, right now. I don't know to whom I'm talking to, but I know I got at least 200 of y'all. I'll make 201 that know that when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I have to give him a major hallelujah. But David says something, Dr. Boyd, in the text that got me. David said, after all that I've been through, <laughs> the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O oh Lord, endures forever. Don't forsake the work of your hands. The, the message translation puts it like this. Finish what you started in me, God. Your, your, your love is eternal. Don't quit on me now. I want to wrestle just for a few moments. What must God do in order to fulfill God's purposes in our lives? Uh, 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 what, what, what is it? How is it that, that God navigates the nefarious aspects of our reality to bring to pass what God wants to bring? I, 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 let me drop this on y'all and then I'll be done. First of all, God can get our attention when we go through trouble. Uh, it's right there in verse 6. God, God will get our attention as we deal with trouble. Verse 6, verse 6 reminds us that the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from far off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Check this out. David was a man who was acquainted with sorrow and knew something about grief. When you look at the life and the resume of David, David had gone through a lot by the time he gets to Psalm 138. David experienced the loss of a child at birth. He had various enemies that tried to kill him. You all know after David had defeated Israel's menace by the name of Goliath, Saul, instead of being appreciative, becomes David's worst nightmare. However, as David was going through the ordeal of Saul, David was getting closer to God and was becoming more aware and more aware of the significance of his anointing. And as David was going through the various tribulations of life, he was getting closer to God. He articulates this closeness in the psalm. When he messed up with Bathsheba, he wrote Psalm 51. When he was coming to the end of life, he wrote Psalm 23. When he had to deal with various enemies, he wrote Psalm 27. I consider the Psalms to be those journal entries of David's spiritual diary to give us insight into how we can handle things that come our way. I need to let somebody know you don't get any clarity about your faith when you're on easy street. Your faith is not tested when everything goes your way. Some behave as if we don't know God when everything is going well. But let trouble come your way. You'll pray like you never prayed before. You'll find yourself talking to God on a first name basis. Too many of us don't want to go through the struggle, but we must understand that it is in the struggle that God perfects me. That if God gonna make me what God will have for me to be, there are times when God will permit me to go through something that I don't want to go through so God can prove to me how dependent I am on God and not my stuff. God will permit suffering to enter my reality to demonstrate that God is my strength in my weakness. The reason why some of us aren't perfected is because we haven't gone through anything. Have you ever noticed that some of the most arrogant, conceited, narcissistic people are the ones who have not gone through anything. They never had to struggle. They believe everything was to be handed to them on a silver platter. They didn't have to work. Daddy got them everything they wanted. To. Mama made sure everything was taken care of. And when trouble hit, they lost their ever-loving mind. 
But Job reminds us that when trouble comes, uh, you need to learn how to say, though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust him. God will not allow you to go through anything that's not for your benefit because God has purposed for your life is major and miraculous, but you are stuck in a place where purpose will not be accomplished. Let me see if I can help you with this analogy. There's the story about the eagle and the eaglet. And when the eaglet is ready to leave the nest, the parent eagle begins to make the nest uncomfortable. The, the parent eagle will start bringing back uh, brows and, and thickets and making the nest uncomfortable. And the parent eagle is gently trying to force the eaglet out of the nest because he wants him to personally develop. Now, eagles can't fly if the eagle is under the mama eagle. And, and there will come a point when the mama eagle will push out the baby eagle and watch it struggle to fly. Always keeping his eye on the baby eagle to make sure it does not crash and burn. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I'm here to let you know that's what God will do with you every now and then. Sometimes God will allow for your situation to become so more comfortable and push you out of your comfort zone so you can be what God will have for you to be. God knows that you can't develop in places of comfortability, but it's in the place of struggle that God says uh, I'm going to see what you're made of but do I have any witnesses uh, in the house or anybody watching us live stream that know that God will not let you crash and burn he keeps his eye on you like the songwriter said his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me do I have anybody that ain't afraid to testify you know that God watches you he walks with you he talks with you he holds your hands and he guides your steps. Something else the Texas Taylor teaches is that God's purpose is sometimes connected, watch this, to how we handle our enemies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's right there in the text. Uh, you will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. David did not Come on the scene until he had to deal with enemies. <laughs> I, I know you don't want to hear this, but, but, but it's in the Bible. First of all, uh, David had to deal with the national enemy of the Philistines by the name of Goliath. Uh, David had to deal with enemies on the job like his boss Saul, who tried to kill him after David saved him and the nation. David had to deal with enemies even in his family, like Absalom, who dethroned him for a short time. And David's worst enemy was self. Because there are times, let's be honest, that your worst enemy ain't outside of you. But your worst enemy is the one you look at in the mirror every day. Uh, God can use your enemy to bring you in line with God's will. So that means you will have enemies. <laughs> you will have people who feel like it's their God-ordained duty to oppose anything that you do. You will have people who ain't going to like you. And the problem is you haven't even done anything to them. Am I right about it? Uh, 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 you have to recognize that in some obtuse way, they have a divine assignment to perfect the will of God in your life. Listen, here's the tweetable right now. In other words, your enemy has a ministry to you. Ooh, I, I remember, Jesus chose Judas because Judas had an assignment even as far as the will of God is concerned. Now, let's be honest. I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't know about you. I don't like enemies. I, I, I like to be like, I, I don't like dealing with enemies. Uh, 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 I, I don't want to deal with them. Uh, 
that there are persons though that God will send your way to keep you praying that there are persons whom God will permit to come into your space and give you hell so you'll talk to God uh, uh, if you did not have to pray about certain folks, some of us may not even speak to God. Uh, and even if you're telling God, God, kill them, at least you're talking to God. But the wonderful reality is you and I don't have to fight them. That's God's job. You and I have to recognize they are there, but God can and will fight your battle. The songwriter was correct when he penned those wrongs. Uh, if I am right, he will fight. The Bible says that he prepares. Somebody going to get a shot off this. He prepares a, a table before me in the what? presence of my enemies can I give you this for free you can't have a table prepared until you've had some enemies because your enemies will be front and center to see what the Lord will do in your life anybody know that the battle is not yours it belongs to God let me get out of here let me get out of here let me get out of here um, uh, finally uh, understand that God will fulfill God's purpose despite your failures in the past. <sighs> Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy endures forever. Don't forsake the works of your hands. Uh, David says, the Lord will perfect, will complete, will bring to pass that which concerns me. That's future tense. David is reminding us of the faithfulness of God despite our unfaithfulness. David makes this statement because David is keenly aware that the God he worship, that the God he serve, will keep his word even when David messed up. And y'all do know that David did mess up, but it didn't take away his anointing. You got to remember something about David's life and his anointing. Um, and, 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 and let me, if I could, help you to understand that the anointing is for service. You, you are anointed for a particular service. David was anointed to become king of Israel. And David remained king until he died, even though he disappointed God. Uh, David wanted to build the temple. And the Lord said, no, you, you, can't, you can't build a temple. Got too much bloodshed on your hands. Uh, David, you are purpose, though, to be the king of Israel. David, you are purpose to establish a J Davidic line that provides messianic lineage to my son. But at this time, as king, as anointed king, David messed up. You know, David committed adultery with Bathsheba. Uh, David was an accessory to murder because he had Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, killed. David failed to discipline his son, Amnon, when he raped Tamar, his half-sister. David did not provide the covering for his daughter, Tamar. But remember this one thing, and this is going to bless about 23 of you all. David never asked to be king. <laughs> the Lord sought him out for the job. You think you chose God. I'm getting ready to bless somebody. But I need to let you know, God chose you. And, and you got to fulfill this because if God started it, God will finish it. God ain't going to give up on you because you're God's handiwork. You're God's masterpiece. You're God's major project. And yet, this is the beautiful view about David. David is a content to allow his generalizing to stay on some philosophical, intellectual level. David is not concerned about how and why God moves. But David praises Yahweh, whose habit is to deliver him from affliction. 
David praises Yahweh, who restores him to the fullness of life, even though David is responsible for messing up his life. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'll, I'll be transparent. I have to admit that, that God had to get me out of some stuff that I brought on myself. And this is the reason that somebody needs to shout. It is God's character. It is God's nature to bring us out of situations that knock us to our knees. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I know that uh, somebody have to admit that you should have been dead. Uh, Y'all got to excuse me. My Mississippi is trying to slip out. Uh, somebody has to admit that, that you should have lost your mind and gone crazy for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, some of us uh, have to admit we should have been down and out. But, but do I have anybody that's watching us live stream? Do I have anybody that's in the house right now who can testify that the God we served stepped in and rescued you when you could not save yourself? Uh, that's what David meant when he said, don't forsake the works of your hand uh, because the God we serve uh, is more than able uh, to move uh, and straighten your mess out. Uh, uh, good morning, St. Paul. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but what I love uh, about God uh, is that the Lord moves in quiet confidence uh, and the Lord can work it out uh, even when you can't figure it out. Uh, and, and I know that some of us uh, have messed up in the past. I know that some of us uh, have done some things uh, that make God shake his head. Uh, but I believe I got a few folks in the house. And I believe I got some folks watching me live stream. Uh, they ain't afraid to testify, yeah, pastor. Uh, I've messed up and I've fallen short. Uh, but I've never seen uh, the righteous forsaken. Uh, no, his seed uh, begging for bread. Uh, in other words, uh, if you ain't too scared to admit it, uh, you know if God did it before, <laughs> that God can do it again. Uh, good morning, children. May the Lord bless you real good. Uh, but if God delivered before, God can do it again. Uh, if God made a way before, God can do it again. If God healed before, God can do it again. If God gave you bread before, God can do it again. If God took care of you before, God can do it again. If God brought you through before, God can do it again. If God lift up a bow down here before, God can do it again. Uh, if God handled your enemies before, uh, God can do it again. Uh, if God wiped tears from your eyes before, uh, God can do it again. Uh, if God healed your body of cancer, uh, God can do it again. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but I know I got somebody out there that ought to give God praise uh, because God ain't through with you yet. Uh, you ought to look back over your life uh, and give God some praise uh, because stuff should have taken you out uh, a long time ago uh, but God had to tell you uh, I got more in store for you uh, than you can ever imagine uh, and this is what blesses me um, in the whole doggone text uh, Lord your mercy uh, endureth forever uh, that's enough to shout on uh, and that's what I'm going to leave y'all on uh, Lord your mercy uh, endureth forever uh, it was in the past uh, it's in my present uh, and it's in my future uh, so I'm not going to wait uh, until I get to where you want me to be uh, I'm going to bless your name uh, in the here and now uh, so like James Cleveland said uh, please be patient with me uh, God is not through with me yet uh, when God gets through with me uh, when God gets through with me uh, I shall come forth uh, 
I shall come forth uh, as pure gold uh, if you should see me uh, and I'm not uh, walking right uh, if you should hear me uh, and I'm not uh, talking right uh, please uh, remember uh, that God uh, is not through with me yet uh, cause when God uh, I said when God uh, I said when God uh, gets through with me uh, I'll be uh, what he wants me to be do I have anybody uh, that ain't afraid to testify uh, that's your testimony that's your song uh, you may not be what you should be uh, but you gotta thank God uh, that you're not what you used to be uh, so children uh, keep on praising uh, children uh, keep on serving children keep on singing children keep on blessing children keep on worshiping the best is yet to come because when you get through with what God has for you you have to admit that you'll be stronger you'll be wiser you'll be better than where you are right now do I have anybody that ain't ashamed to admit do I have anybody that ain't ashamed to testify that when you look back over your life all of your good days outweigh your bad days so you ain't gonna complain I double dog dare you in virtual space praise God for what's on the way Praise God for the breakthrough that's coming. Praise God for the healing that's coming. Praise God for the deliverance that's coming. Praise God for the reconciliation that's coming. Praise God for the liberation that's coming. Is there anybody? Is there anybody that ain't afraid to give God praise? Throw back your head. Open up your mouth and say yes. Good God Almighty, say yes. Good God Almighty, say yes. Yes. Ah! God ain't through with us yet. That, that's all of our, that's all of our testimony. God, God ain't through with, with us yet. He's still, still got some work to do. Uh, still got some, some places to mend. Still got some cracks to fit. He ain't through with us yet. Uh, he, he ain't through with us yet. I, I, um. Yeah, um, if you're, you're watching us live stream, um, I, I want to lead you in a prayer, a prayer of new life, a prayer of a brand new start, a uh, prayer of regeneration. Um, we are having people to join us online, join us in this virtual space. Uh, there may be someone in the detention center that need to know that uh, God ain't through with you yet. I'm, I'm here to let you know God ain't through with you yet. Listen, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of new life, new beginning, and, and I'm going to let you know what you need to do if this prayer fits you. I have us all to pray this prayer together, this prayer of new life, because for those of us who have submitted to the will of God, it's a reminder of that commitment. It's a reminder that we said yes. But if this prayer hits you, I want you to hear me and I want you to respond accordingly. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Repeat this prayer after me. God, I know you're not through with me yet. In some instances, you may not have even started because I'm not connected to you through Jesus Christ. So right now, I want Jesus Christ 
to be my Lord and Savior. Save me from my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Help me become the person you want me to be. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. I believe one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. I want to live for you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for eternal life. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Hear me and hear me well. If you prayed that prayer, you meant that prayer in your head and in your heart. You meant that prayer in your mind and in your spirit. You're sincere about that prayer. Salvation is yours. Is it really that easy? Yes. Salvation is the starting point. And it's really that easy. Uh, you're not saved by your works. You're not saved by coming to church. You're not saved by reading your Bible. You're not saved by giving money. You're saved based upon your faith. And it's a gift of God through grace. That's, that's how you're saved. It's really that easy. It's the discipleship part that, that's growing, and that's where God wants us to be. So if you prayed that prayer and you want to be baptized into the family of God, we would love to have you here at St. Paul. You can email us at connect at spbcnc.org, or if you're watching us on Facebook, type salvation in the chat box. One of our digital ministers will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. Um, if you are watching us on our website, type in salvation in the chat box when our digital ministers will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. Or you can call the church office. If you're on the phone or, or any other aspect, you can call the church office at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your phone number by five o'clock tomorrow evening. Somebody from our office will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. You may be saying, well, pastor, I'm already saved, I've been baptized, but you feel led to become a part of the tribe here at St. Paul. You feel led to become a part of this local fellowship. I would love to have you. I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. The crazy thing is we have people who are joining us virtually from all over the country. It's blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind. We would love to have you. And this is what you can do. If you want to join by Christian experience, just type Christian Experience, or uh, Connect rather, on Facebook or the website. Just type in Connect in the chat box when our digital ministers will reach out to you or email us at connect at spbcnc.org. Let us know you want to join by Christian Experience or you can call us here at the church at 704-334-5309. Leave your phone number or email address where we can best reach you and we will let you know what your next steps are. We want you to be part of the family of God. We would love to do life together. Amen. Amen. Well, we're getting ready to get out of here. We thank God for your presence um, uh, today. And uh, at this time, we will have our benediction and we'll call it a day. We look forward to you all joining us in our Bible study on Thursday at noon. Thank you for all that you all continue to do. All heads bowed. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our spirits have experienced in this place. Thank you, God, for song, scripture, prayer, and your word. Now, God, as we leave this space, this place, we pray, oh God, that you will be with us. We know you ain't through with us yet, and for that, we say hallelujah. Now, God, if you would dismiss us from this moment, but never from your presence, keep us in your sovereign care until we're able to come back together again. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. St. Paul, I love you. I miss you all. God loves you even more. Continue to wash your hands, wear your mask, practice physical distancing. We're still in a pandemic. We're on our way to coming back in real soon. Continue to pray for us as we set up our internal protocols to make that a working reality. I miss you all. I love you all. God bless you all. See you all real soon.